How's it going everybody and welcome back to our Cisco Enterprise series for CCNA, CCMP, and CCIE. I know it's a mouthful. Um, in this video we're going to be focusing on TCP, well, actually hold on one second, right here. Uh, TCP to UDP is what we're going to be discussing in this video. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So what I want you guys to understand at a high level is that there is TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol, and then UDP, User Datagram Protocol. And essentially, the point of these two is for different media, uh, different application uh, transfer options. Essentially, all that, that means is TCP is a connection-oriented model, which means the endpoints that are exchanging information are actively talking to each other and making sure that the data sent between point A and point B is done reliably. So there's consistent acknowledgments back and forth with the traffic flows, things like uh, secure connectivity and stuff like that is how TCP works. So it is a reliable transfer model. So anytime you hear reliable or connection, or reliable is the key key term here. Any type of reliable communication with a SYNAC, uh, SYNAC or SYNAC ac that's going to be a TCP type of connection. So, and it's always going to be unicast, meaning from one to another, but not one to many or all. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail here in just a second. UDP is connectionless, meaning it's you send it and there's no reliability built in to guarantee that the end user or the receiver received the traffic. So um, in that particular case, it's best effort. So I'm going to send it. If you receive it all, great. If not, eh, so sorry for you. A great example of that would be if you've ever heard been on a phone call, and I don't care if it's on a wired, uh, a wired hard line or a cellular connection, whatever the case might be, and you get the audio either becomes choppy, uh, you miss some of the words that are being said, that's a best effort type of communication. Because even though it's unicast uh, between two phones, it's unicast communication between the two, even though it's unicast, if the person saying something, you miss something of what they said, or you're watching a video feed of something, and then it gets a little pixelated, or the, um, the part of the, the video feed itself comes in black, um, uh, black squares, pixelation and stuff like that, then a couple seconds later it comes in, you get the full picture again. That is a best ever type of communication. So the reason why it's best effort is because it's real time. Any of the applications that you use that require real-time feeds, voice and video are gonna be the two main ones. Those are always gonna be real-time application, real-time data traffic that it needs to just be sent. There's, um, the key difference between TCP and UDP is in the event that something goes wrong in a TCP stream, meaning data going from one point to another, if there's something wrong, something gets dropped, whatever the case might be, there's a corrupted file transfer, whatever the case might be, what ends up happening is you'll reliably resend what was missed. So there are sequence numbers in TCP that are exchanged between source and receiver that determine whether or not all of the data being sent between the two devices was received correctly. And if you miss a sequence number or something goes wrong in the data transfer, when the two are going back and forth and sending that the, the acknowledgments and the SYN and the ACK and the SYN and the ACK going back and forth, uh, the synchronize and the acknowledgement back and forth, if something goes wrong in between them back and forth, making sure that everything's the same on both ends, then the sender can resend the traffic to the receiver to make up for whatever the receiver didn't get. Now, it says slower but reliable transfers. Now, <clears throat> that will depend on what is being sent. So for example, 
if I have a very large data file, let's uh, think of like a Microsoft operating system, you know, multiple gigs in size or a very large video download, something along those lines, what will end up happening is you'll deal with a thing known as windowing. Windowing, TCP sliding windows, is the idea of trying to maximize the amount of bandwidth you can take for that particular data transfer. So this happens on a file by file basis. So for example, um, I will, I don't know if I'll be able to show you what, I'm, what I mean here, but one of the things that I do when I'm teaching VMware content and I'm deploying vCenter server, is vCenter server comes as an, uh, as a, as an OVA. And uh, you can take that OVA, you can unzip it to expose all the individual files. You can also get the ISO version as well. So when you take the disk image and you want to copy it from point A to point B, if you don't zip it and send it, then you run into a problem with individual files. So the way that file transfers work in most cases is a very large file size when you're just starting out, you're gonna start off with a very small window size. What is a window size? Well, that is going to be, you're only gonna be able to send it at uh, maybe a couple kilobits per second or a couple megabits per second uh, across the wire. And because you're not exactly sure how much bandwidth is available for you to send with. So think of it like you're jumping onto a, a two lane road that eventually opens up to three lanes so if you're behind a slow driver, you can switch lanes and go to the open lane and get around the slow driver, right? So if, you, if there's more bandwidth available on the link, you'll be able to take that. So the sliding windows concept is you're going back and forth out of the gate. If you ever notice in a, notice in a Windows file transfer, you'll notice that it starts off real slow, it climbs a little bit, and then all of a sudden it'll shoot up, it'll tape out, it'll uh, it'll top out at maximum bandwidth, and then once the file transfer is done, you'll see it drop back off dramatically and finish the file transfer. So all that there's a bunch of communication happening at the control plane level to make sure that that data feed going back and forth is happening correctly. That's going to be your SYNAC uh, communication, your synchronization, your acknowledgement, all that type of stuff. But at the same point in time, you have the, the sliding windows concept where your application is going to start off slow with the amount of traffic it'll send. It's almost like opening a floodgate, right? So if you've ever watched a, a floodgate open up, or if you ever opened up the gate on a fence, right? You open it up a little bit, there's, you know, water will come through the gate, but the more you open it up, eventually you'll get to full capacity and you'll be able to send as much uh, water out of that gate as you possibly can. There's going to be an upper limit. So TCP sliding windows is the exact same thing. If I have a very large amount of data that I need to send, it's gonna, not going to take very long, and all of a sudden I'll be able to max out the bandwidth. It might be 100 megabits per second. It might be a couple gigs, depending on the, trans, the, the data circuits you're going over, whether they're 1 gig, 10 gig, 100 gig, things like that. So the sliding windows capability will come into play, and very early on in the data transmission, it'll open up and take as much bandwidth as is allowed and it'll take that bandwidth for as long as it can. Now, if you get a lot of l really small files that are a couple kilobits or kilobytes, a couple megabytes here or there, and there's a lot of them, you're never going to be able to take advantage of the full sliding windows capability because by the time you end up sending that one file, the sliding windows happens on a per file basis when it does the negotiation back and forth. So you'll see it doing like this. It'll start to ripple and go up eventually to where it'll max out. And so every new file that it's got to send, it's got to recalculate that. And that's where TCP is slower, but reliable. So I've seen this a bunch of times when I copied vCenter server from where I have it on my storage array over to a, a Windows VM that I usually show you guys how to deploy vCenter from. There's a copy process that I go do 
where it takes a while, it takes like 20 minutes for it to copy. And the reason why a five gig file takes, or 10 gig file, whatever it is, takes 20 minutes is because the big bulk of it will happen pretty quickly. All of a sudden you'll see it spike out, but then you'll see it slow way down when you gotta send all these little individual files that might be much smaller than a couple megs, or it might be 20, 30 megs, depending on the size of the file. So those individual files will take longer to send because every time it's going to send a new file, it's got to recalculate it. And it, that takes more thread uh, processing power and stuff like that. So it's a little bit more involved. So when we take a look at how TCP comes into play in that respect, it's you want the reliability, but you're sacrificing reliability for slowness. So you're, you're taking it, you're going to go transfer the data slower for the fact that it's going to be a reliable transfer. You're not going to have to worry that you didn't miss something. Where on the other hand, with UDP, you're going to send it as fast as you can. And you're not going to, and if some gets dropped, some gets dropped. No harm, no foul. But the difference is, instead of UDP communication for voice and music streaming, you're sending the data or video, you're sending the data as quickly as you can because it's real time. Where a Unless it's like a pre-recorded uh, video file or music video, something like that, where it's already pre-recorded and you're just downloading a pre-recorded message or uh, file, then it then that will transfer back to TCP. Where if it's real-time audio, like the words that are coming out of my mouth, or you're sitting on the phone, or you're watching a live stream on whatever video platform, content delivery network you might be on, whether that's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it might be, that's going to be a live stream. You know, the video file is going to get, it's the it's not recorded already, it's happening as we speak, so you're able to pull stuff off like that. So TCP only supports unicast communication, where UDP supports unicast, multicast, and broadcast. So let's talk about those for a couple minutes so we understand the difference between them. We're going to have to understand each type of uh, transmission process because they're all going to take uh, have a specific use case and and how we move forward. Unicast is going to be the first one that we're going to need to understand, which is one to one communication. So, for example, if I get up from my my desk and I go talk to my wife, then that and I'm only talking to her. I'm addressing her with whatever I'm saying or asking. Then. She's the only, other people might hear her, but I'm addressing her. She knows, she'll listen to what I've got to say, she'll field my question, whatever it might be, and then she'll give me a response. So that is unicast communication. Now, in the, the event that I say something to my wife and there's other people in the room, they might hear me, but they're not going to, they, they might even be paying attention to what I'm saying. However, they might not acknowledge it. That's a good example of multicast. So another example of multicast would be where I want to send traffic, I want to send a video feed to only a certain amount of people and only those people that have requested that video feed will get it. And that's how multicast works. Even though, let's say for example, you've got um, an entire department of, of employees need to get trained up on, or there's a, there's a department of employees that need to get trained on a particular thing, whatever that thing might be. And what they end up doing is they go to this place to receive their training. So they go to this place to get their training, but let's say for example, that two of those people, there's 10 people, two of those people get pulled away for something. Well, now they're no longer connecting to that feed with that that the training or whatever it might be and so because they're no longer connecting to that feed no multicast traffic is sent from the multicast source to the multicast receiver so multicast will always be one to many but not one to all that is broadcast broadcast is one to everyone and that's why it's kind of derived the way that it is. And I, I like this uh, infograph because it gives that, you know, you can tell that I have source, 
and then I have three receivers. These other three people, the other three yellow circles, they don't get it because they're not interested in that data. Where broadcast is one to everyone. So what's an example of broadcast? Well, a DHCP uh, discover is going to be a broadcast. It's going to send, I need a DHCP address. Or an ARP, address resolution protocol. I need to determine what the MAC address is of this particular IP. I know the IP address, I don't know the MAC address. So ARP is going to go out and figure that information out. Reverse ARP is layer two to layer three. ARP is layer two, layer three to layer two. So I know the IP, I don't know the MAC. Reverse ARP is I know the MAC, I don't know the IP. So that's an example of how those two come into play. Now, can you make UDP reliable? In some cases you can, but the bulk of it you won't be able to. So there are ways, to, so for example, um, and I, I won't say reliable like TCP, there's not gonna be like a, a packet, there's not a, like a protocol or an encapsulation that will be able to be you know, in, integrated with a UDP flow. But for example, if you're watching this video on YouTube, what will end up happening is, this is real, uh, it's a real time audio, right? Well, for the most part, it's you're, you're watching a pre-recorded video that I uploaded to YouTube. Well, what will end up happening is, that will be what they considered replicated unicast. So because the data is being sent from a video source and you're the watcher, there might be multiple people watching the video all at the same time. So that's still gonna be technically a broadcast type of communication. If there's two or more people watching the video at the same time, it's technically not the same video flow. And that's the one thing about multicast that's different than all the other ones. Where with, um, with broadcast, or I should, I should word this a little bit differently. With multicast, you have a single feed going out to multiple receivers. Where unicast is a single feed going to a single receiver. Broadcast is a single feed going to all receivers. The difference between the three is that when I'm talking about unicast, for example, let's say this guy right here, well actually this is a good example here. If, let's say talk about uh, like cable TV or satellite TV, for example. Theoretically speaking, from a control plane perspective, it's a multicast type of control plane, meaning you are uh, anybody that tunes in to, for example, you're watching a football game. I don't care what team's playing, but you're you, you tune into say Fox to watch NFL football on Sunday uh, Sunday afternoon. There's multiple games going on at the same time, so but you happen to connect to Fox, and whatever team is playing on that one is going to get that feed. So Fox is streaming that game from the. The, uh, the stadium that the, the game is being played at. You've got a bunch of cameras that are sending that video feed out to all the people that are going to be watching it. Well, if a thousand people decide that they're going to want to tune into Fox to watch that particular game, great. So what ends up happening is the user at the ho uh, that wants to receive that game on TV will go to that channel and that signals to the cable or the TV company I need to bring that feed in. So, but it's one feed. Multicast will always be a single feed. Now, if I'm on, if I'm at home, or let's say there's a hundred of you, and you all want to watch the same Rob Riker YouTube video, that's one feed per person. So if there's a hundred people, they're all going to YouTube, they're all watching the same video, they're not in the same location. Therefore, and they're, uh, they're all coming from different different places. Some might be on their cell phone, some might be on an iPad, some might be on a laptop, some might be on a big screen TV, whatever the case might be. You guys are all requesting an individual stream from YouTube. So there'll be a hundred different feeds of that video to every single person that's trying to watch that video. YouTube, is because the fact that, if it, so and the reason why I know that is because if I was to go to YouTube and click on one video and start watching it and then pull up my phone and try to watch the same video, they're not gonna play at the same time. So that's how you know. If, if you, there might be a little bit of delay uh, and some, depending on where you are in the country and how, depending on your distance from where the traffic is being sourced from, 
if you ever, I've been on the phone multiple times to people that are in other places. Like I've got friends all over the place. I'll be on the phone with them and we'll be like talking about whatever and he'll have the game on, I'll have the game on. And, but he'll know something about the, the game. Even though he's watching the same game, he'll hear it um, through my phone before he'll see it on his TV because I might be closer to the feed than he is. Or his system's a little bit slower. I might have cable, he might have satellites. Satellite might be slightly slower or vice versa. But it's the same feed. How fast it gets to you will determine your distance from the source. So in the event that I'm watching YouTube and there's a hundred of you watching the same video on YouTube, that's a hundred individual streams. Because if I went to your house and your house and your house, there will be, you'll be a different, it's possible they all start at the same time. So there, it's possible that you can mimic multicast, but from a data transmission perspective, they're all individual flows, even if you started them all at the exact same time, because you're not all tuning into the same stream. So the key thing here is stream. If you're streaming data, multicast. If you're watching a recorded video, it's gonna be unicast from source to receiver, and that's gonna be how that comes into play. So that's when I talk to customers about, okay, do you have multicast requirements? Do you ever need to go and deal with, you know, do you have a central location that you're going to be sending a lot of data out of that's video? Do you have a need to support multicast, uh, training, whatever it might be? And if the answer is no, then multicast isn't even on my radar. I would say and it doesn't have to always just be a video feed. You can use multicast to distribute all kinds of stuff. It can be, um, you can do Windows imaging with multicast. You can do, um, I've worked with healthcare comp uh, customers where they use multicast for looking at uh, how many beds are open, what the, how the, uh, the charts uh, for a particular uh, wing of a hospital. All kind, there's all kinds of different uh, use cases for multicast to be used. At the end of the day, it all comes down to what is your use case? Do I have a particular reason to use this? If I do, I'd say probably 25 or 30% of my customers over the course of my career have deployed multicast to some level. Obviously, some are more complicated than others, but that's essentially the, uh, the bottom line. So when we talk about it from that perspective, just realize that if you're watching something pre-recorded and it's being, you know, you're on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever streaming service you might be on, Netflix, whatever, that that is all going to be unicast. And so if you're watching the latest, uh, I'm a fan of Outer Banks on Netflix. Uh, I've been watching that since it came out in a, uh, like three or four years ago. So whenever a new season of Outer Banks comes on, we go online to watch it. Well, if I'm watching an older season because for whatever reason I want to go back and watch all the seasons before the new season drops just so that I'm caught up and I know who's who and what they're doing. Well, if I go do that, then my wife might be in the next room over. We have a smart TV in our bedroom and it's connected to the, to the network via wired cable. I'm a nerd, right? I've got my whole house wired. So if she's watching something else on Netflix and I happen to go tune in to watch the exact same thing, we're gonna get two different feeds, right? There's gonna be feed coming to my computer, there's gonna be a feed going to her TV. So, but because it's unicast, it's pre-recorded. The only thing that goes, the only thing that you're gonna ever see is gonna be the same same feed at the same time is gonna be a multicast feed, but it's a live stream. Live, anything that's live. Video, voice, live feeds, or multicast transmission, because you're tapping into it. Because, and, and you can 100% you can prove this too. You can go watch a movie and start a movie, watch it halfway, and then go down, go somewhere else, try to watch that same movie. So start over from scratch because it's a different device, different stream, or a different uh, video flow. However, if you watch, for example, the State of the Union or something that's, uh, you know, you go watch the evening news, right? If you go from one room of your house to the other room, they're all going to have the same feed. It's multicast. At the back end, it's a live stream. So they're all going to see the same video feed no matter what. 
and you'll get that. It'll be the the audio should be synced almost down to the millisecond and stuff like that. So that's where that capability comes into play. So we're gonna definitely be playing around with that as we further uh, get down further down the line and how all that stuff comes together and getting that all squared away and in place. So if you guys have any questions on that, you know where to put them down in the comment section down below. That is pretty much all I have for TCP and UDP. Uh, I felt like that was important to cover before I started getting into any of the in-depth pieces of what we're gonna be doing for the simple reason of it's basic information. You guys need to understand how some of this stuff works before we get started and all the stuff that goes along with that versus me going through, there's uh, going through other stuff first and then covering this. I feel like this was definitely something to be uh, cognizant about. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you guys for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or anything like that, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. Please be respectful of each other. If you uh, haven't already done so, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch all of you in the next video.